What is up everybody? This is Like It's 1985 and this is my review of Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Voyager Class Ultra Magnus. And of course here is Ultra Magnus in the truck mode or what I like to think of it as a rolling weapons platform truck mode. But there you go. Pretty cool. I love the colors on this. The dark blue, the red, and you got some silver accents here on the sides on the bumper here. You got the Autobot symbols on both sides of the vehicle form, and I think it looks cool. I, I like it. Uh, rolls really well, as you can see. And you got the uh, blaster cannon, as Hasbro calls it, on the back here. Uh, pegs into the uh, little uh, uh, peg holes back here. And uh, we can take a look at the bottom here. You can see clearly uh, these will be the legs, the chest. You can see the head there. Uh, so pretty uh, simple uh, transformer and as we'll see a pretty uh, basic transformation now it does have uh, a lot of uh, peg holes uh, throughout the vehicle mode here you've got uh, two on each side right here and then you have two on each side right there so one two three four one here up top five and then you got the peg holes back here now from what I can tell, uh, Hasbro was intending to have these two pegs, or grips here, as they will be grips for the uh, uh, Ultra Magnus and Robot mode to use. Uh, as far as I can tell, they're supposed to go into both of these peg holes, but really, in practicality, you really can only get one peg hole, or one uh, peg into one peg hole, because of the way that these spaces are. Uh, between the two uh, pegs here. Uh, but nonetheless, you can still get the weapon on there and looking pretty good. And so you have uh, lots of playability there with the uh, different uh, peg holes that you can, they actually accept uh, other, you know, Transformers Prime weapons, uh, such as um, Voyager Megatron's weapon here. We can plug this actually up here. And we'll take a uh, mech tech weapon here, plug this over here. And we'll take uh, Voyager Sentinel Prime's uh, weapon here, plug it in on the top. So you can do a lot of different things, and, and that will carry over also into uh, the vehicle form. So it looks silly, but you do have that playability. So the, uh, the ports here or the peg holes are actually uh, compatible with a lot of the other, you know, mech tech weapons or other prime weapons or uh, even the arms micron weapons. So uh, let's get into size comparison. Well, here's uh, Ultra Magnus. Here is uh, Hot Shot, uh, also known as uh, Bumblebee. And then we have a Viacon here. So you can kind of see the size or the scale of difference between the two. So there you go. All right, so with that said, Let's go ahead and transform this guy. Now, as I was stating before, the transformation is relatively simple. Uh, you want to start by just unpegging the side panels here. These tab in at two little tabs there into the side of the legs. Uh, that kind of frees up this area here. You want to take the front section here, the bumper. You can see it's going to actually, uh, and this panel here flips up. And you want to just take these out of the side. Obviously, these are going to become the arms and just get those out to the side for now. Take the legs here, you can see it's kind of in a, a, a sitting position here. Um, that's the way you want to have the legs when you transform it from the um, robot into the vehicle. But anyway, you want to split apart the legs here, uh, take these uh, bits here, fold them in, and they, they sit flush against the uh, side of the leg there. You want to take the legs, straighten them out, like that. Uh, take the toes out there. And you could leave uh, the legs like this. It looks pretty decent uh, with it like this with the two tires like that, but that's not the correct transformation. You wanna take the uh, panel here, untab it. This, could, this gets rotated up like that. And it's basically gonna just wrap around his leg and peg into the side there. Again, we'll do this over here. Rotate and fold and tab into the side of the leg. And there you have the legs and feet done. And as for this cab section, this is one whole piece of plastic here. And it actually, there's a hinge there. You want to rotate the back and pull it down and out or out and down. If you look back here, what's interesting though, this is all actually uh, translucent plastic. 
that all on his back is, is uh, the whole backside is uh, translucent, uh, translucent plastic. So there you go. And so the last step you want to do here, well, not the last one, but you want to take this whole assembly and rotate this down. There's a little hinge there. So you want to just bring it down and like that. Uh, you want to take out the hands here. Just fold them out. They are on ball joints. And you can see you have this uh, hanging uh, off the side of his arm. You're just going to take that, fold this around, and that becomes his uh, forearm. And I don't think it really tabs into place. It just kind of holds in place like that. And you can get the elbows bent out like that. There you go. So there is Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Voyager Class Ultra Bigness in robot form, robot mode. So uh, articulation wise, uh, as we take a look at the uh, head sculpt here, uh, the head itself is on a ball joint. You do have this collar guard here. It does get in the way a little bit, but you can get enough plausibility as you can see uh, from the head. Uh, the head itself does have uh, clear plastic back here, which would indicate it would possibly have light piping, except for the fact that the eyes are actually painted, and they are painted a uh, green, sort of a lime green color. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good head sculpt, though. I like it. And interestingly enough, if you take a look at where the uh, the shoulder piece connects its, uh, to the torso, you do have articulation there, as you can see there, and then you have a ball joint here. Now these ball joints, uh, if you've seen some other reviews, they oftentimes these are really loose, so you're going to have to use some the super glue trick or something to get the get the uh, enough friction there to actually tighten up these joints. So you do have a very loose ball joint here. Uh, when I first took mine out out of package, this one was tight, but then as I transformed it, it became looser. But this of the two, his uh, right arm is the tighter uh, ball joint there. So, you know, obviously my, your, your, your toy may vary from, uh, from mine here. So you have a swivel at the uh, bicep there. You got a uh, kind of a ratchet elbow. You have the uh, actual hand on a ball joint. Then you have articulation right there at the waist. And then ball jointed uh, hips slash legs out to the side. Not back too far because you clash with the back of his uh, cab there. And then you have swivel at the thigh, bend at the knee. Kind of a ratchet, I guess, there. And then uh, that's really all that we have for articulation. Now, my favorite gimmick to the robot mode is, if you'll notice on the chest here, this is actually uh, translucent plastic. And if you notice on the back here, this is actually made of translucent plastic. What that means is, if you shine a light through here, it will actually show up in his chest. So let me demonstrate that here. As you can see, I've got a light behind there, and you can see that is very, uh, very, very cool feature of this robot mode. I can't think of any other transformer off the top of my head that has that feature where you have a uh, translucent piece of plastic back here that actually will shine through through his chest out the front. I mean, that is that's fantastic there. I love that uh, feature of Ultra Magnus in robot mode. The weapon, let's show you the weapon here. Um, it actually has uh, two components. You can actually plug this uh, you know, onto the actual weapon on the side here with the peg. Something like that, or actually it would be more like that. So you have that possibility. Uh, this weapon here, the, the missile, I mean, you can place it in his hand if you want. It looks a, bit, a little bit silly, uh, but it does fit in there. Uh, for a more G1 look, if, if he had two of them, that would have been awesome to have these on the shoulders like that. That would have been sweet to have two of these missiles on the side for a G1 Ultra Magnus uh, type of look. So you do have this missile. It does actually have a, another peg hole on top, so you can kind of double up on your weapons if you wanted to. Uh, the very nice feature of this weapon here, as you can see, very cool looking, very nicely detailed. And as you pull back, that flips out and becomes his hammer. And you have a light there. 
And normally on the previous uh, weapons such as these, you wouldn't have a locking mechanism, but you do have this little blue tab here, and this goes over and locks it in place. And there is his, uh, I guess they call it his battle hammer. So there you go. Really cool. And uh, of course you can place it in his hand. And here we see Ultramanus with his hammer in one of his hands, his right hand here. And you can see he does wield it pretty well, although you do have the problem with the loose ball joint and the weight issues. But once that is fixed, it looks really, really cool. I like that a lot. As you can see, you can have Ultramanus hold his blaster cannon in one single hand. Although you will have issues with the loose ball joints until those are fixed. But looks really, really awesome. And as you can see here, Ultramanus can hold his blaster cannon in both hands. There's actually the post here that goes into his hand as well as over here. So really cool way to display Ultramagnus here with his blaster cannon. The peg right there. So you can certainly store it on his on his back. I don't think you really want to put it anywhere else. You could actually, well, you can actually plug it into the side here like that. Not really in hammer mode maybe, but in uh, the gun mode. Something like this. So that's a... Uh, type of effect. But here you can see <laughs> it doesn't hold the weight of that very well at all, so you're going to have to use something to stiffen up that, that ball joint. Uh, size comparisons. Well, let me go ahead and bring in a couple uh, Voyager class figures. Let me get uh, Ultra Magnus here squared away. So, Bring in uh, Optimus Prime. This is the RID version. And let me bring in Megatron. And of course these are both uh, Voyager class figures, so there you go. Uh, size comparison there. I think they look pretty well, I think they look pretty good all together there. So let me also bring in a couple uh, deluxe figures here. Uh, first edition RC. And Wheeljack. So there you go. So yeah, this figure actually I I, I like it. Uh, again, uh, if you watch other people's reviews, they're going to mention the fact that the shoulder joints are very loose from the factory. Uh, you could get lucky and perhaps have one that's not as problematic. But at least this is something you can fix. You can add. Uh, something to, uh, you know, stiffen up the uh, shoulder joints, the, the ball joints there, so I don't have too much of a problem with that. Uh, one, more de one more detail I like is that here in the shoulders, you have some, uh, looks like they're like missile rays here, which is pretty cool. Alright, so this is a review, review of the Transformers Prime Robots in Disguise Voyager Class Ultra Magnus. And I picked this up at Target, so they are available via retail. And, uh, yeah, so there he is, and that's my review. Thanks for watching.